we will never be equal in the amount of work that we both put into the house because I am the mom, you know, I do carry more of the mental load on figuring out what everyone's gonna eat and making sure doctor's appointments are scheduled, making sure medications are refilled. And then, you know, we have three boys that are part of the neurodivergent community and they have occupational therapy and speech therapy. And my son was in summer school because we were trying to make sure he didn't fall behind. And it's just like trying to make sure that I could, because I went to the, you know, ARD meetings and I'm trying to make sure that the special education plan is, you know, put together. And granted, that's a whole nother subject in itself, you know, dealing with special needs kids. Uh, so we struggled. Well, I struggled in that area a lot because I didn't get everything down. I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to do here, 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 here? And hearing her tell me and then actually having to apply that, it took a while for me to turn a corner in that. And then even had a conversation about just uh, apologizing about where uh, I wasn't carrying my my weight. Because even in the video, I talked about how I wanted to apologize. Just even, even from a public uh, perspective to see that I, I struggled in that area too. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video and it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier prayer engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scared to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. And I'm in the house with Clarissa Heineman. <laughs> What's up, y'all? What's up? <laughs> Today's segment, we wanted to take a, an approach on a video that uh, has went crazy uh, on my Instagram. And the topic is basically about your wife is not your mother, right? I wanted my wife to be on here to discuss some things as well, to be able to help the ladies understand. So she's taking a, a woman's approach um, and sharing some of our experiences as well. So the video talked about your, your wife not being your mom and how hard your mother had to work in order to make the household run, especially if you grew up in a single parent home and she had to do everything now as Superwoman. yeah, superwoman right now, as a man, you get older, you get into a relationship and you, you, you almost like looking for your mom and she does everything just like your mom did. And then, like she said in the video that you, you're comparing her to your mom, you know, my mom did it, but mom was wore out. Mom was tired. And, statistically, I believe, uh, well, the, the marriage rates are down because people are getting married uh, older now and, and lesser people are getting married. But 25%, I believe, of divorces occur because he's not pulling his weight in the house and not so much of providing. We get that. You bring home the check, but there's so much that go into the home, whether if you if you have small kids, shoot, even if you have teenagers, they need to be monitored, you know, uh, things of that nature. But when I showed you that video, the reel that went crazy is over a million views now. What was your initial thoughts on the, the, the video? 
So when I first saw the video, I felt like I finally got acknowledged on how I've been feeling for a while about household chores, the splitting of the things that we have to do for the children, how the household runs in general. And there is a lot of times where as women, we feel like we have to be superwoman and carry everything on our shoulders. And so when she brought up the fact that our mothers are tired, their bodies are broken down, they're now having ailments and sicknesses that um, a lot of it came from stress. Um, it made me realize that I don't want to be that mother and I don't want my boys to have wives and expect them to do everything um, because it's exhausting. And in 2024, the carrying a full uh, full time job and taking care of the children as well as, you know, trying to still be there for your friends, you know, love God and, you know, work out and be fit and do all the things like it's a lot to do in 2024, especially if you don't have the finances to have a nanny or a housekeeper or all the other things like the, the nanny and the housekeeper is you. So um, seeing her video, it made me feel heard and understood um, for the first time in a long time. And so I was glad that you were able to see the video and kind of understand where I'm now coming from when, because we've had tons of arguments about that subject. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of arguments about it because, you know, my husband, you know, he does a lot, you know, but I would tell him like, we will never be equal in the amount of work that we both put into the house because I am the mom, you know, I do carry more of the mental load on figuring out what everyone's going to eat and making sure doctor's appointments are scheduled, making sure medications are refilled. And then, you know, we have three boys that are part of the neurodivergent community and they have occupational therapy and speech therapy. And my son was in summer school because we were trying to make sure he didn't fall behind. And it's just like trying to make sure that I could, because I went to the, you know, ARD meetings and I'm trying to make sure that the special education plan is, you know, put together. And granted, this is a whole nother subject in itself, you know, dealing with special needs kids. But, um, so even if you aren't a mom who has children that are a part of special needs programs and all that other kind of stuff, just being a mom in general is exhausting. And the mental load that we have to carry and all the things that we have to do, not only for our family here, but, our, you know, our parents, our siblings, our aunts and uncles, um, especially if you do have come from a big family like like I do, like you still have a lot to do with just, you know, outside family as well. So I feel like the video made me feel heard. It made me feel understood. And I was glad that Sean was able to see what it's like <laughs> from another woman's perspective. Because it seems like ladies, we can tell our husbands things, but they don't seem to understand when we say it. But it seems to understand when other people say it. So I was glad that it finally clicked. <laughs> like someone else said. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because there was a time when we talked about this a little bit earlier where I struggled in that area because there was so much going on where we we had uh Caleb, we had Joshua, we have a blended family, we you know, so much going on. And I had to get in and understand, like, okay, this is where she needs help. This is and then even sometimes for me, I need to hear stuff two or three times. I need to hear it two or three times before I fully, fully get it. I got a lot of stuff going on up here. So uh, charge it to my, uh, what is it? Charge it to my heart, not my, my mind. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. In a comment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Say it in the comments below. Uh, so we struggled. Well, I struggled in that area a lot because I didn't get everything down. I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to do here, 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 here? And hearing her tell me and then actually having to apply that, it took a while for me to turn a corner in that. And then even had a conversation about just uh, apologizing about where uh, I wasn't carrying my my weight. Because even in the video, I talked about how I wanted to apologize. Just even even from a public 
uh, perspective to see that I, I struggled in that area too, you know, so I'm not perfect. And this, this video is just to be transparent. And if there's any man that's struggling in this area, just know you got to have a conversation and you got to keep getting your reps in. You know, we talk about that in football. You got to get in your reps. You know, you're doing the same play over and over and over again until you get this thing locked in your head. And that's where the patience comes in, too. You got to have those uh, fruits of the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, I would say for men not to get defensive um, when the woman does come and start asking for help. And something else, uh, women, we have to ask for help. We yeah, have yeah. to. Uh, we... I used to try to do it all on my own and I didn't like having to explain things because when it's when I'm at the point of chaos, I don't want to have to tell you what to do. I just want it to be done. But that's not fair because a lot of times he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know where I need help and how he can effectively help me. So um he always tells me though that he Sean is been telling me this since we got together. He says you can't pour from an empty cup, and so he does try to do things like take the kids so I can get some rest or do anything and do those things for me. But our issue is more coming down when it came to just the splitting of the household chores. I finally had to like let go of the laundry and let go of the dishes after dinner and, you know, focus on the things that I could, you know, that he's not as good at. Like he <laughs> cooking's not his forte. Yeah. It's okay. You gotta get there. Yeah. I mean I can live. He can. I can live, but you know, cooking is not well. <laughs> cooking is is something but <laughs> it's one of those things where over time like i say you got to make sure you have the conversation you've got to talk about it uh if not uh you know we're our mind readers we we have to have the conversation and when we do that then we can get on the same page and have the patience to know i need this done by this date and time you know that whole thing because there's a difference i believe between nagging and asking yes uh, and for me, I know too, I get it. You playing Call of Duty and she's calling you to another duty and you just frustrated. You like, really? I'm in the middle of my game or you watching a football game. She needs you to take out the track, all these different things. So do these things ahead of time. Always keep your head on a swivel. And I had to learn that as well. You got to pay attention to what's going on around the house. Uh, and knowing this, this is what I need help with. I need help with the dishes. I need help with uh, the laundry. Um, I think you developed a routine. routine. Yeah. Because we started doing a routine because it, it was a big point of contention for us. Like we started like on the weekends, like every Saturday, Sean knows that that's his day to sleep and mop the whole house that it, we don't have to talk about it we know that is what he's going to do every weekend and it makes gives me peace because I like my floors clean um so I know that's going to be done so I don't have to nag him because my husband is a more of a routine type of person he likes to know what he's going to do like he knows that his job is the trash I don't touch the trash <laughs> so he knows that he'll be piled up high and he knows he's gonna come home and take the trash out yeah. um also, I was going to say for women, um, don't feel like you have to do everything immediately. Um, one of the things I struggled with and I would be upset at Sean about is that I felt like he would put his needs before mine or the children. And it's not like something drastic, but like as simple as the kids get up in the morning, they come wake us up out of the bed. He'll go and use the restroom, brush his teeth and get himself together. And I'm holding my pee for another 45 minutes because I'm making sure that they get fed and clothed and diapers changed and all those things. And I would be so frustrated with him that he would not just go in there and do what the kids need first. And I had to learn that even when you're on an airplane, if it's about to crash, the you know mask come down, they're going to tell you to put your mask on first. You have to Take care of yourself first and not saying to ignore your children. Let me give that caveat. Yeah. Um, but you can take five, 10 minutes to go and brush your teeth and pee. <laughs> like do those things before you get to, you know, and granted, if you have a little tiny baby, I get it. Yeah. And we mommies don't like hearing their children cry. I get it. Um, there is some seasons where that might not be as feasible, but when you can put, put yourself together first and those children will be fine they'll get what they need and I had to realize that my children were fine they were not being neglected they had everything they need and that I'm still a good parent even though I go and brush my teeth and pee first <laughs> you know what I'm saying like so I had to remind myself that that's okay and 
um, just speaking to other mommies out there who might feel the same way, it's okay to put yourself first to get together so that you can be good enough <laughs> and your breath is not funky in your child's face mm -hmm. and you're not getting a urinary tract infection because you're holding your urine for too long. Like it's okay to get yourself together first mm -hmm. and the children will be fine. And that was a big lesson that I had to learn for myself And because mom guilt is real. Okay. And I had to start letting go of that mom guilt and be like, they're fine. They're, they're okay. And I need to make sure that I'm okay too. Mm -hmm. so that I can be the best version of myself for them. Mm -hmm. And when we are, remember, because with our kids, we're we're raising uh, husbands, we're raising wives. We, we don't think about that long term. We're just thinking we're raising just these little kids or mm -hmm. these teenagers or whatever, but they're watching us. They are so. I remember there was this one time that Jeremiah, my nine-year-old, he was he was getting frustrated with me because I kept making him clean out the bathtub. And I was like telling him, he was like, well, why do I have to clean? And I was like, one day you're going to get married. One day you're going to be a husband and your wife shouldn't have to clean up behind you. This is your mess. <laughs> I didn't mess up this bathtub. You did. So you should clean it up and your wife shouldn't have to do that. And I'm dropping these nuggets, even though he's nine, I'm dropping those now because I, one day I, he is going to be a husband. He is going to be a father. And I don't want him to put unnecessary stress on his wife, you know, that, you know, doesn't belong to her to carry to begin with, you know, um, he should be able to do things for himself and not depend on someone to do everything for him. It's not healthy. And that's one thing that I feel like we're trying to instill in our boys, like how to be, you know, self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. You want to have that and independence, teach your kids independence, but also as well as interdependence, right? And learning how to communicate with other kids and stuff like that. Or even when they turn teenagers, yes. the, the importance of communication, uh, because when they do get older, they they will have a spouse, you know, or just even just relationships with people. Mm -hmm. The more that we give them these small tools because they're watching us, I believe the more effective they will become. And then also you especially when you're having a son and you see a mom do everything, just like she was saying in the video, he's that's what he's going to look for because mom did everything. He's going to look for that in a woman, mm -hmm. you know, so we want to make sure that we train up a child in the way he should go. Right. Mm -hmm. So that way uh, this can be a, a better world. Cause, but that's another video <laughs> for another time. So if this is something, is was there something else you want to talk about before we, because you talked about mommy guilt. I think that's huge too. Yeah, mommy guilt is definitely something that I know a lot of mamas struggle with and just feeling like you have to do everything all the time and be here for everybody at all times. And when you're not, you feel like, oh my God, the world's going to fall apart. Even like my husband, he doesn't leave his phone in the room at night. And I cannot do that because in my head, even though the kids are at home with me, they're here. That should be my only concern, right? But no, I'm like, no, but what if a family member calls? What if I need to call and get somebody at three o'clock in the morning? Like I'm always like on guard for everybody. And it's the healthiest thing. And I'm working on it. Y'all are still in counseling. Right? <laughs> trying to get this stuff together. Yeah. And she bought, she bought my alarm clock. She bought, <laughs> bought my alarm clock. And I get it because I've talked about that on social media and people were saying, well, I have kids in college. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I get it. If you have kids, in, I get it. But I'm saying for the most part, uh, I, I just don't keep my phone in the room. I just think that's a, a, a time for intimacy and conversations and stuff like that. And, and eventually, you know, your kids will get older. They'll, they'll become grown ups and stuff. And then they will even learn too. like mom and dad don't leave their phone in the room. Like, oh, I, I need to be grown, grown. I need to be responsible because. Um, we are closed from 10 to 6. <laughs> yes, I will say people now know that after 9 o'clock, you can't really get in touch with us. I'm probably in bed. We have, we have a tight schedule around here. We are tired. <laughs> yeah, right. And when you set boundaries with people, they will respect it. You just got to get people caught in that ecosystem. Yeah. You got to get them trained. You got to train people. That, nope. I No. Like you say, past 9 o'clock, no. 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 So. Uh, let us know in the comment section is the, if this is something that's uh, been a struggle for you, whether if it was mommy guilt, whether if it was communication or trying to get your spouse, especially with husbands. Right. Because a lot of times I believe a lot of men are still kind of stuck in. I bring my check home. That's enough. 
when there's so much more that needs to be done. Uh, when you clock out, there's stuff that you need to do when you get home, whether that's cleaning with the kids, all those different things. And uh, it's real. It's real out here. But I think we need to uh, shift our minds and start thinking different that it's a team effort. She works just like you do. So you got to help fold clothes too. I appreciate you for helping fold clothes. All right, Brave Farms community, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this with someone because, again, you never know. Share this video in your group chat because I know you and your girlfriends be talking or you and your homies. This is where you will put it in the, in the group chat. So that way, you know, y'all can have a conversation about uh, this video as well. If you're listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and also in the description, there's going to be some. Uh, great merch as well. We got the uh, Love Fearlessly line that my wife has started that she's killing the game with it. Uh, and of course, if you uh, haven't become a member of the Brave Arts community, make sure you uh, hit us up below as well. But everything will be in the description below if you have any questions. This is Sean Heineman with Clarissa Heineman. All right. We are out. Bye.